Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to consider the subject of power. We're going to perform a practical experiment to help us figure out what the formula to calculate power is. We're going to discuss just how important it is to understand this formula and where it comes from for electricians everywhere. And we're also going to look at some typical exam questions that you may get asked during your assessment. So we've got our rig all set up ready to go. We'll carry out the practical experiment and then we'll see how we can get the formula from that. So in our calculation, we're going to take some values of voltage, current and power and see how they relate to each other. But it's important we make the point here that the information we're about to look at is true for DC circuits and also for AC circuits that are purely resistive. So that's circuits that don't include any inductance or capacitance. When we start to put those things into our AC circuits, the rules for calculating power change ever so slightly. And we'll have a look at how that changes in a future video. So first of all, let's just have a think about the load that we're going to be connecting up. We're going to look at a few different loads. The first one is a one kilowatt heating load. So again, this is dissipating power in the form of heat and it has a power rating of one kilowatt. We're now going to measure, first of all, the voltage that we've got connected up uh, to our load because we need that information. So we'll turn our multimeter, our clamp meter here to measure voltage and we're going to connect up across the line and the neutral. So we're connecting in parallel across the load. This is just a convenient point to access uh, the electricity here. And what we'll do is we'll power that up and we'll turn the load on. And you can see there that the voltage that we're getting is 244.3 volts. So that's the voltage that we're getting there. Now, if I uh, turn this off and disconnect my leads from here, and from here and then what we'll do is we'll power up again set this to measure current and we can see there that the current is 4.2 amperes so we've got our information there for our first load one kilowatt and those measurements of voltage and current and what we'll do is we'll have a look at those in a moment on the whiteboard and see how they relate to each other so we'll disconnect this load now we'll turn that off and isolate the power to make sure that no one's going to get hurt and then what we're going to do is we're going to connect up our second load now the second load we've got connected up is a two kilowatt heater so again a purely resistive load and it has a value of 2000 watts so let's measure the voltage and the current again we'll record those values and then we'll have a look at how they relate to each other in a moment so we'll measure once again across the line and the neutral and we will power the circuit up and turn the load on and you can see there we're getting 242, uh, where are we up there? 243.1 volts. Now that's settled down. So 243.1 volts is the value that we'll use. So we'll just switch that off, disconnect it and isolate it so that we can remove our probe safely. And then we will set our ammeter to measure current. So our clamp meter is now measuring current. We'll power the circuit back up again and we will have a look at this and you can see that the current now flowing is 8.4 amps so we've got 8.4 amps flowing into this circuit so that's the amount of current that this load is taking again we'll turn that off and we'll isolate what we're going to do now is have a look at a third load now for our third load, we're going to make another little change again. We're actually going to look at an extra low voltage circuit. So we're going to measure the voltage and the current uh, that's on the outgoing side of this transformer, get some values and see if that makes any difference to our power calculation. So again, let's plug in here and we will power this circuit up. So we'll power it up and turn it on. So you can see over here, we've got three lamps illuminated and those have a combined power rating of 150 watts. So each one of those is 50 watts and they are, have a combined value of 150 watts. So that's our power value for this part of the circuit. Let's again, go back and measure the voltage and we're measuring the voltage on the output side of this transformer. So we'll see what the voltage is going to be there. Now, even though I'm dealing with extra low voltage, I still like to be safe, so I'm just going to turn off the circuit breaker while I connect this up. So we'll measure the voltage output on the outgoing side of the transformer here. Okay, so we'll power that up and we'll see what we get. Uh, 
and I don't know if you can quite see that there, but we are measuring 12.1 volts. So we've got 12.1 volts coming out of there. So again, we'll just disconnect that, uh, take our leads off, change this so that it's set up to measure current. And we will power this up and then measure the amount of current flowing into the circuit here. So let's have a look at this. We can see here that the current we're measuring is 11.1 amperes. So we've got some different voltage and current values now. So we'll have a little look at how these relate to each other. Let's head up to the classroom, go to the whiteboard and see how those values relate to each other. So you can see here, we've got the values that were recorded down in the workshop. We've got those clearly laid out on the board here. Here's the values that were recorded for our first heater, our second heater, and our extra low voltage lights. So looking at the numbers laid out now, can you see a relationship between those numbers? Is anything starting to jump out at you? Well, maybe if we sort of look at the difference between these numbers, that might help. If you look here, we doubled the power for our second heater. We went from 1000 watts up to 2000 watts and notice what happened to the current. The current went from 4.2 amps to 8.4 amps. So we can see that by doubling the power of the heater, we actually doubled the current that was flowing to it. So there's a clear relationship. If we increase the power, we increase the current that flows. And that's obviously very significant for our electrical design work when we start thinking about designing circuits. But let's put this onto a slightly more mathematical footing now. If you look at these numbers here, we've got 1000 watts, 244.3 volts and 4.2 amperes. Is the relationship between those three numbers? Well, it might not be immediately obvious, so let's look at it this way. Let's say that voltage is about 250 volts when you look at it there. And the current that we've got there is about 4 amps. So can you see a relationship now? Is it possible that if we have 4 amps multiplied by 250 volts, that would give us 1000 watts? Well, yes it would. So we can see, can't we, that there is a relationship between power, current and voltage. And that leads us to the first of three power formulae. Now you'll notice I often say formulae is the plural for formula. So where I'm talking about more than one formula, I'll say formulae. Technically, that's the right way of doing it, but I guarantee at some point I will say formulas. So uh, please feel free to comment below every time you notice one of those. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have a look at formalizing that relationship. So if we say that the uh, power in the circuit, the uh, power in the circuit P is equal to I, the current, multiplied by V, the voltage. So that is our power formula. And this is what I often refer to as the basic power formula. If you take the current and times it by the voltage, you will get the power. Let's see if that's accurate with our slightly more accurate numbers that we measured from the workshop downstairs. So we've got 4.2 for the current and we're going to times that by 244.3 and we'll see what we come out with as an answer. So when we do that calculation, we find that we get 1026.06 watts. So let's write that out on here so we've got power is equal to 4.2 times by 244.3 and therefore the power that we've calculated is 1026.06 watts so why is it then that we've not come out with exactly a thousand watts well really what that boils down to is the fact that we've probably got some issues with manufacturers tolerances here. So this won't be exactly a one kilowatt heater. It will have been made in a factory, mass produced, and there will be tolerances within that manufacturing process. So rather than it being exactly a thousand watts, we've got 1026 watts as the uh, power being dissipated by that. It may also be that we've got slightly more voltage connected to it than the uh, heater was designed to take, which would also increase the current flow and therefore cause the power to be a little bit higher. But again, when you look at this value compared with that value, we're within a 3% tolerance. So that really is quite reasonable. So will we find that our formula works for the rest of the examples that we did? Well, let's have a look at it, shall we? So first of all, we've got here power 
is equal to current times voltage. Notice I've got that habit of always putting my formula down. I've written it just there. I've written it here again. This is the way we start to remember them by writing them down again and again. Let's do the calculation, put the numbers in. P is equal to I 8.4 times by 243.1. And again, if you think of this as being eight times 250, which those numbers are very close to, of course, that's going to come out at 2000, isn't it? So let's see what our numbers come out at here. I suspect this will be even closer than it was before. 8.4 times 243.1. And we come out with 2042.04. So the power being dissipated by that heater was 2042.04 watts. So again, for similar reasons that we discussed on the previous example, the value is slightly higher than what we were expecting it to be, but we can see the relationship, we can see the importance of this calculation. Now our final one was an interesting one because of course here we were dealing with a lower voltage, a much lower voltage than we looked at in the previous examples. So let's see if this relationship still holds true. We've got 12.1 volts and we've got 11.1 amps. So let's see if the power is correct for what we calculated there. So we're going to put our numbers in. We've got P is equal to I times by V, which is equal to 11.1 uh, .1 times by 12.1. And when we do that calculation, 11.1 .1 times by 12.1, we come out with a value of 134.31. So you can see there that's come out reasonably close to our 150 watts, again with manufacturer's tolerances, and also the fact that we've got this connected up to a transformer as well causes us some differences, but you can see that the principle holds true. We're very, very close to our value of 150 watts that we were expecting to get. So just to expand a little bit on why this formula is so important, P equals I times V, we're going to head back down to the workshop and have a little look at some more information down there so that we can understand why it is that we need to know this formula, not just to be able to pass our exams, but also to help us with our very important installation work as well. And we'll have a look at that in our next video. All that remains now is to say thank you very much for watching.